Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 6, Lesson 7 on Turning Phrases into Inequalities. So this is our last lesson in our, our introductory unit on algebra in Math 6. We, in the last lesson, dealt with inequalities, right, and how to graph inequalities, how to see if a particular value was a solution to an inequality. Today, we're going to do some basic introductory work on how to turn a, an English phrase into an inequality if it makes sense to do so. So let's get right into that in the first exercise where we play around with a very common phrase in English that then gets turned into an inequality. Here we go. All right. There are key phrases we have to watch out with when we're modeling scenarios with inequality, and exercise number one really gets at one of the most common ones. So let's take a look at it. Maria stated that she has read at least eight books this summer. Assuming Maria is telling the truth, answer the following questions. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. Now, I've highlighted the, the phrase at least, and that's the one that we're kind of like honing in on in this particular problem. Right? So given that she has read at least eight books, right, and let's say she's telling the truth, letter A asks us, could Maria have read four books this summer? Think about that for a moment. All right? And the answer is no, right? If somebody says to you, hey, I read at least eight books this summer, then there's no way if they're telling the truth that they read four. Right? Well, that's easy enough. No. All right? Letter B asks us, could Maria have read 10 books this summer? And the answer there is definitely yes, yeah. You know, if I said, hey, I, I read at least eight books, or I ran at least eight miles, or I, I ate at least eight hamburgers, oh, that'd be a lot. Um, but then, you know, 10 kind of falls into that category. So the answer is yes. All right. Now, letter C is exceptionally important. What is the fewest number of books Maria could have read this summer? All right, I'd like you to write down the answer to that yourself. All right, well, hopefully you've heard the phrase at least, at least a few times, right? And the plain fact is if I say that I've read or Maria has read at least eight books, then literally that means that the fewest that she could have read was eight, right? That's the fewest she could have read. Now let's write down an inequality, letter D. Let B equal the number of books Maria read this summer. Write an inequality involving B that represents the number of books Maria could have read, right? Now, Maria could have read eight books, nine books, 10 books, 11 books, etc. right? But it starts with eight, and it's any number of books that's eight or more which means that the number of books that Maria met, read must have been greater than or equal to eight, right? The phrase at least is exceptionally important, all right? And it almost always, I'd like to say always, but I don't know, you never know, almost always translates into a greater than or equal. So if I said, hey, I ate at least 10 hamburgers, well, then I ate 10 or more, so h would be greater than or equal to 10, right? If I said I ran at least two miles when I went to the gym, then I could have run two, two and a half, three, four, four point seven. So, you know, the number of miles would be greater than or equal to two. Let's keep going and work with some more phrases that we can translate into inequalities. All right, let's look for another important phrase. Exercise number two. Francisco was carrying a bucket full of water. He knows that it weighs, at most, 18 pounds. Letter A, give some examples of weights that Francisco could be carrying. All right, so, you know, Francisco is carrying a bucket of water. Maybe the bucket of water, you know, holds at most 18 pounds, right? So in letter A, what I'd like you to do is just write down some random examples of weights that Francisco could be carrying based on the fact that he knows that it weighs, at most, 18 pounds. Pause the video now and write down a few choices. Well, he could be carrying 18 pounds. He could be carrying 10 pounds. He could be carrying 9 pounds, 1 pound, 
17 pounds, right? There's actually an infinite number of choices. You just can't have anything bigger than 18, right? If I say that the bucket weighs at most 18 pounds, then it couldn't have been 20 because 20 is more than 18. And at most means that's the most you could have, 18. Letter B, I kind of spoiled this one a little bit, gives some examples of weights that Francisco could not be carrying. All right, so go ahead and write down some weights that Francisco could not be carrying. And maybe we should have a T in here. Some weights. Well, as I mentioned, he couldn't be carrying 19 pounds, couldn't be carrying 50 pounds, there's no way he's carrying 25 pounds, etc. So as long as you're writing down numbers here that are more than 18, you're all set. Letter C. What is the largest amount of weight that Francisco could be carrying? Well, this should now be pretty easy. Why don't you write something down? So the whole point of the phrase, at most 18, means that 18 is the most we could have. It's the highest value we could have, right? So 18 is the greatest amount that he could be carrying. Letter D. If W represents the weight that Francisco is carrying, write an inequality that represents all of the possible weights he is carrying. All right, great. Why don't you try to write something down in terms of an inequality? Well, notice, all of these weights, right, the possibilities, and these are just some of them, right, are all either 18 or below 18. So, we can say that W is less than or equal to 18 shows us all the possible weights that Francisco could be carrying, right? And in fact, the phrase at most almost always translates into a less than or equal to. At least, greater than or equal to, at most, less than or equal to. All right. Let's get some more practice on these inequality phrases. So at least, translation, greater than or equal to. At most, translation, less than or equal to, right? And these two happen to come up a lot in real world problems, all right? Just the way that we kind of talk about you know, the amount of quantity that someone might have, you know, you might say, oh, I went to sleep last night and I, you know, I got at most like six hours of sleep, right? Which could mean that I got two hours of sleep. It could mean that I got five and a half hours of sleep. It could mean I got six hours of sleep. Or, yeah, you know, I, 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 I went out for a run today and I ran at least 30 minutes, right? Ah, well, I could have run 30 minutes or I could have run 40 minutes or two hours or, you know, 100 minutes, all right? At least is greater than or equal to, at most, less than or equal to. So let's just do a bunch of them. Exercise number three. Read each of the following real world scenarios that involve a variable. List some values the variable could have, and then write an inequality involving the variable that describes all its possible values. All right, let's do one of these together, and then I think I'm gonna have you do all the rest of them on your own and then we'll go through them one by one. So let's take a look at letter A. Jenna took a nap for longer than 20 minutes. Let M represent the length of Jenna's nap. Possible values of M. Okay, so here's the key, right? So we know that Jenna took a nap for longer than 20 minutes, all right? So what are some possible values of M? Well, M could be 25 minutes, it could be 32 minutes, it could be, you know, 80 minutes. But don't forget, it could also be something like 20.1 minutes, or it could be 20.01 minutes, right? Because all of these numbers, right, are a longer nap than 20 minutes. Really important, she could not have taken a nap for 20 minutes. She couldn't have done that, right? Because it says longer than 20 minutes. But we wouldn't want to start at the 21 minute mark because certainly if we slept for 20.1 minutes, that would be longer. 20.01 minutes, that would be longer than a 20 minute nap. And in fact, the inequality that we should use to represent all possible values should just be m greater than 20. Not m greater than or equal to 20, not m greater than or equal to 21, right? But simply, more than 20, greater than 20. All right, 
So what I want you to do is work through all the remainder of these problems and again, kind of keep this one in mind because sometimes you'll have a greater than, sometimes you'll have a less than, sometimes a greater than or equal to, sometimes a less than or equal to scenario. So try to work through each one of them and figure out what you have. Take a few minutes for this because it will take you a little bit given that you've got to do some reading and you've got to fill in a couple things for each problem. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Sophia has a board that she knows is less than 12 feet long. Let the length of the board be represented by the variable B. Possible values of B, inequality involving B. And by the way, imagine this, right? Maybe Sophia started with a 12 foot long board and then cut something off of it, right? But she doesn't know how long the cut was, but she knows since she started with a 12 foot board that whatever the length is now must be less than 12 feet long. So, you know, some possible values. Well, you know, an obvious possible value would be something like 11. You know, you could have 5, you could have 2. Keep in mind, though, you know, you might have cut something very small off, right? It could be like 11.9. It could be 11.999, right? All of these things are examples of board lengths that are less than 12 feet long. Now, this might be about the most direct translation you can possibly get going from English to an inequality because literally, I just want the board length to be less than 12, right? Literally, it says less than 12. So that really should be our inequality. Let's go through the rest of them. Let's take a look at letter C. Jaden created a playlist of songs that has no more than 15 songs. No more than 15 songs. Let N represent the number of songs in Jaden's playlist. Let's go through possible values of N. Now this is a little bit of a trickier phrase. We haven't come across this one yet. No more than 15. So keep in mind, you know, Jaden can't have 16 songs or 17 songs or 18 songs because he can't have more than 15. But it doesn't say he can't have 15, right? So he could have 15 songs, he could have 14, 13, etc., right? Which means that the number of songs he has must be less than or equal to 15, right? Less than or equal to 15. But that's a little bit of a tricky phrase, no more than 15 songs. It's almost easier to think about what you can't have in that situation than what you can. Let's take a look at letter D. Lucas is at a party where no less than 20 people attended. Let P represent the number of people at the party. All right, and again, look at this phrase, no less than 20 people attended, right? Which means, you know, you, you couldn't have less than 20. You can't have 18 people, you can't have 5 people, right? But we could have 20 people, right? We just can't have less than 20 people. We could have 21 people, we could have 30 people, we could have 100 people. Simply put, this phrase just means we can't have less than 20, right? No less than 20, so we could have 20, we could have 21, etc. That means that our inequality, even though the phrase has a less than in it, our inequality is actually P is greater than or equal to 20. By the way, right, think about this last one. More than, and yet it's a less than or equal to, and less than, it's a greater than or equal to. And it's that word no, right? That's really kind of flip-flopping the way that we have that inequality. Let's take a look at two more. All right, letter E. Kamani ran more than 15 miles this week as she trains for a marathon. Let M be the number of miles that Kamani ran. All right, well, possible values for M, right? She ran more than 15 miles. Ah, so she could have run 17 miles. She could have run 22 miles. She could have run 15.1 miles. She could have written, so I'm sorry, she could have run 15.0001 miles, right? All of these are more than 15 miles. Therefore, the inequality is simply going to be m greater than 15. m greater than 15. All right, and our final one, letter F. Dylan caught a fish that was less than 14 inches long. Let F be the length of the fish that Dylan caught, etc., etc. 
You know, and again, you could imagine this, you know, Dylan might have something on his boat that he's using that he knows is 14 inches long, right? And he holds the fish up to it and he sees that the fish is shorter than that 14 inch thing that he has, but he doesn't know how much shorter. So all he knows is that it's less than 14 inches long. So, you know, it could be 13 inches long, it could be 10 inches long, it could be five. It could though also be like 13.9 inches long or 13.99 inches long. I only write these down to really kind of hammer home the idea that we can't just necessarily go, well, it's less than 14, so you know, 13 and below. Because we can have numbers, especially things like lengths, right, or distances that are less than 14, but then bigger than 13. So the inequality involving f is pretty simple. Just f is less than 14. And again, you know, there it is. <laughs> it's literally about as obvious as it gets. F is less than 14. All right. So generally speaking, if we read through things like this very carefully, right, and we pick out those important phrases like at least, at most, less than, more than, no fewer than, no more than, things like that, and we really think about possible values that could work, and maybe even think about possible values that couldn't work, it will then help us write down the correct inequality. Let's wrap this thing up. Inequalities are exceptionally important in mathematics because they model many things that we do in the real world. All we want to do in Math 6 is kind of get used to plotting some inequalities on number lines, which we did in the last lesson, and also take some common phrases in English and convert them into statements that, that involve an inequality. And that's really what we got at today. All right, you're going to do a lot more work with inequalities in Math 7, Math 8, and above. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.